Kelantan translates as the land of lightning. It's located in the northeast of the peninsula of Malaysia and it shares a border with Thailand. Kelantan's lifestyle is rural and the state is filled with hidden gems for those looking for adventure and eco-tourist activities. Kelantan's cultures, arts and crafts, food and even the language is very different to what you will find in other parts of Malaysia. I was introduced to Kelantan food a few years ago when I made a short trip there and I have to admit I am a huge fan of its unique flavours. You will find dishes in Kelantan that you have never come across anywhere else even if like me you were born and raised in Malaysia. Today we are in Kelantan, uh, one of the 13 states in Malaysia which is situated on the eastern part of the peninsula of Malaysia. Yeah? And Kelantan is in the northern part. Yep. So this is one of my favorite things to eat in the world. It's called Nasi Krabu Kelantan. And it comes with a number of different condiments. It takes a little bit of a assembling to do, but uh, the condiments can change. But these are some of the key ones you can typically find in a Nasi Krabu. And I'll show you how to make it now. So Nasi Karabu isn't exactly a one-pot meal. It does have a few different components to it, but I'm going to show you each of the separate components. So I'm going to show you first how to cook the rice. It's very straightforward. It's just regular rice, but with a blue hue to it, okay? So we're just gonna cook this in the rice cooker. Now, to get the blue hue, you can either use a blue food coloring or in uh, traditionally is actually made with the extract of what's called the blue pea flower, blue butterfly flower. Nowadays in Australia, you can actually get a hold of this. Okay, so these are the flower dried flower petals, and you soak you 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 soak them in water, and they produce this beautiful blue color that you use to cook the rice with. Alternatively, you can just use it in powder form. This is what I do mostly nowadays. Just add water to it and just cook it as you would normal rice. So the other part of nasi karabu is just having some raw vegetables or herbs to go with it. You can use raw bean sprouts, you can use cabbage. Uh, this is what I've got sitting in my fridge today. So I've just got some lettuce. I'm just gonna slice it up, cucumber. And from my garden, I've just got some laksa leaves, otherwise known as Vietnamese mint here in Australia usually, and some basil, Thai basil. Now, if you have salted egg, that's a very common condiment to go with your nasi krabble. I don't have any of that here today. So another thing that we're going to make is we're going to make the rumpa or the spice mix that can be used in a couple of the side dishes that go with nasi krabu. And for that, as with a lot of Malaysian uh, base rumpa, you want onion, garlic, ginger, and lemongrass. So we're just gonna cut this up and blend it. Some garlic. This is already minced, but I'm just gonna throw it in together and blend it with the onion anyway. You want some lemongrass. This again, minced lemongrass, frozen minced lemongrass. You can find this fairly easily in Australia in the freezer section of Asian grocery stores. And ginger, minced ginger here. So typically, the garlic and the lemongrass and the ginger will not be minced. I'll just be mincing it all together in here, but I'm just throwing it in here anyway. Okay, so let's split this. So I've got the pureed mixture here. This is pureed chili, pureed dried chili actually. So we've got the spice mixture here. Onion, garlic, ginger, lemongrass, chili. We're gonna use this in two different condiments. First of all, we're going to make a srunding which is like a shredded coconut spicy mixture. With, you can make it with fish. We're gonna use some canned fish for this. Okay, so now we're going to make some surrounding. Just gonna turn this on. I've got some desiccated coconut here. Malaysia, it's more common to use fresh coconut, fresh grated coconut, but 
here in Australia. Desiccated coconut is just easy to come by. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're just going to toast this till it's brown. You just do this on low to medium heat just to make sure you don't end up burning it. Now you're going to find that it's going to continue to brown some more after you remove it from the heat. So just make sure you take it out just a shade or two beforehand. So we've done the toasted grated coconut. We're going to throw in some canned tuna here. Of course, typically in Malaysia, you've been using fresh fish. I'm going to add some of the spice mix here, which is a combination of onion, garlic, chili, ginger, and lemongrass. I'm just going to fry this without oil till uh, some of the moisture is evaporated before I add the oil. Otherwise, it just tends to splash everywhere. Just add some bit of pepper, bit of salt and sugar. Kalantan food is noticeably sweet, sweeter than the food you would find in other parts of Malaysia. So a bit more sugar than you would otherwise use in a Malaysian spicy or curry or sambal dish. You can add a dash of tamarind or lemon juice here if you like to kind of like just add that little bit of a sour note. going to add the oil in stages just so that it doesn't spit too much first of all and so that it can work itself through the flavors. So you see this is drying up. We're going to add the coconut back in here. We're going to add a bit of budu which is a Kelantan fish sauce, fermented fish sauce. If you don't have it, you can leave it out. You can use regular fish sauce or you can use something similar anyway just gives it that extra zing so this is the spicy shredded coconut in the town of Kotobaru is a market. This is the most famous market in Kota Baru. There are a lot of colorful items and on the ground floor is a wet market and one thing unique about the wet this market is that most of the sellers are ladies. Laksa and laksam are different things. Yeah, I guess so. It's similar, but laksam is laksa with oh, an M. I thought it was just the same word, different pronunciation. <laughs> no, it's actually different food. I think so. Oh. It's slightly different. I don't know how different exactly, but we'll find out. Okay, let's find out. Going to a place like this is always an overwhelming experience because I just don't know where to go. There are so many options. Right. It's kind of incredible, really. <laughs> cool. Alright. This is uh, no fish or fish? Fish. Fish, okay. Fish. Okay. You know? Good job, Steve, for trying. Hey guys, my turn to try. Put some sambal. Look at the noodles itself. It's like a. Gigantic. Yeah. Like it's like a it. cake. It's like a cucumber. Look at that. <laughs> it's different type of noodles. Mm. Let's try. Mmm. It's good. It's similar to laksa, but this is white. It got white sauce instead of red. So I think it has no curry. It's more coconut base and fish base, and it's thick soup. Mm. Yeah, I think you're right. It's really flavorful. And I can also taste some like chicken stock or something almost. Not sure. Really? It's supposed to be fish. The lady said it was fish, mm. but. Mix it with some young mangoes, bean sprouts, some herbs, and the noodles. It's good. Mm. 
A Raman uh, Mosque in Kelantan Teluk Mosque. One thing a bit special about this mosque is that it was built in the swampy area. The land was reclaimed. The whole mosque is wooden structure. If you look from the top, it looked like a, a mosque on an island. The mosque was influenced from Indonesia, Morocco, Yemen, and Turkey. Hi everyone. Chef Rene Johari is back. Today I'm going to share a special recipe for you. A local favorite is called Chucho Topi. So, Kue Chucho Topi is one of the locals' favorite snacks or tea time or coffee time. So, this is the recipe that I'm going to share with you. The ingredients that we're going to use for this dish. So, one cup of flour, one cup of rice flour, one fourth cup of brown sugar, two fourth cup of white sugar. Basically, I'm uh, dividing the sugar uh, type. You can always use only white sugar if you wish. So, you just use three fourth cup of white sugar and one cup of water, a pinch of salt, and basically whisk and bowl to mix them. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna mix all the ingredients up together. We're gonna dilute the water and the sugar together. So you have the sugar earlier. So as I mentioned, I use a one part of uh, brown sugar and uh, two parts of white sugar. And we have the flour, normal white uh, all-purpose flour. Just a pinch of salt earlier, okay. You don't want to over salt your mix. Okay, so what you're going to do is that just so you want to remove all the lumps out. Make sure that all the ingredients are well mixed. And the idea of mixing it is to do for at least around good 4 minutes, 3 to 4 minutes. We're going to rest the mix for at least 10 to 15 minutes. The rest thing will do is that it will make the batter more smoother and more runnier. The mix was already uh, rested earlier. Okay, you can see how fluffy they are now, well mixed. But we're gonna fry them. To fry them, you need a wok, all right? Why is that uh, you need a little bit a dome-like base so that the effect of the chucho topi, topi means head or cap, will form the kueh. So what we're gonna do is that we already heat up uh, oil, fry from the side to the center. So you don't want it to be too deep around three fourth ladle of oil so the oil is already hot make sure the oil is hot to make this effect you need the oil to be hot and also not extremely too hot as long as it's already start to smoke so we can start all right just drop it in the middle okay so that's how it looks like you can start to see how the circle or oval start to shape where the side will fry first and you will see the middle is a little bit wet Okay, that's how uh, the effect should be. So what we're going to do after is that we're going to flip it where the shape of the head or the topi will start to form. So you can start to see the middle is started to form. What we need to do is just slide it to the side and flip it. So continue to cook it. You can start to see the center over here. Uh, this is where the, the, the uh, topi or the cap look like uh, effect that shows into the kuwait. So you just get a strainer and a tissue to dab the oil, the excess oil. There goes the first one. So we go for the next one, drop it in the center. You can see how it's frying on the side. It will start to fry and then it goes to the middle. So normally this is uh, best to have uh, with your tea in the evening, coffee. All right, see the effect of the head. You can see how it looks like. Right, so that's why it's called the chucho topi, okay, or head fritters. It looks like a head. Let's split up. So, voila, your chucho topi or head fritters ready. Oh, this is nice, Ivana. Wow, Steve, what? everything you see looks good for you. I seem to be look a sucker at, for the bright colors. Oh my god, we got so many quiz already. Look at all this.
think, I think uh, tea governance, I think. Tiga. Oh, thank you. All right, there you have it, guys. I think we spent like six or seven ringgits, you think, Ivana? Yeah. And got tons and tons of quay. So step one was a great success. City Khadija Market on a Friday morning is awesome. It's a great travel experience. Lots of action, lots That's of right. snacks, lots of people, lots of smells. It's a really interesting place. To believe this only costs around 20 ringgits is unbelievable. Look at all the good stuff, all homemade too, which is amazing. I'm gonna go with this one. Interesting. This is banana cake, I think she Ooh. told me. Ooh. So we have we only have two of these. Yeah, so we can share. We can share. Mm -hmm. Let's try. Banana Ooh. cake. So I really love banana cake. Yeah, who so doesn't? Looks like a banana muffin. Right. Mm. Wow. This mm. is really good. This is good. Awesome. This might be my favorite one. Yeah. Wow. Not, not really sweet. No. But still, the taste is really nice. Mm -hmm. So soft, mm. fresh baked. That's really nice. Okay. I could have three or four of those. This is like a muffin, but not a muffin. Look at this. By the way, I think all of this is homemade, right? Yeah. I, think I think all so. the ladies um, who were selling it also made it, make this at home. Right. I think all of these are homemade. Right. I think so. Made I with love, so. made with skill. And they're just I really nice. So, yeah. mm. That banana cake was nice. Yeah. Really nice. That was nice. Mm. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Kelantan is famous for batik. Malaysian batik is well known as one of the greatest fabric and handmade batik are established early 1900s in Kelantan. This is the best souvenir to bring home after your visit to Kota Baru in Kelantan. So the next side we're going to make is something called solok lada or stuffed chilies and to do that you need some fish paste which i made previously i made this just yesterday and this is just basil fillets cut into chunks and seasoned with a little bit of tapioca starch and some seasoned pepper and salt or if you use chicken powder you use chicken powder and uh, just blitzed into a paste form now what we're going to do with this is we're going to add some shredded coconut to this There you go, so fish paste plus shredded coconut and I'm using desiccated coconut again. So now what we want is we want to stuff some big nice red chilies with the fish filling. And to do that what you want to do is just cut a slit down the middle, peel it up open, then break it and then you just want to remove the stem and the seeds. So what we're going to do now, we're going to fill the cavity with the fish paste. So now what we're going to do, we're going to simmer this with coconut milk. So add a bit of water. some asam gupping or tamarind, dry tamarind slices and just let it poach. It's a bit, a bit of seasoning. So you want to simmer this until it's cooked and also most of the liquid has been absorbed by it. The fish paste is just kind of like the Chinese yong tau fu stuffed vegetable fish paste. I use the same recipe. The only difference is that this has the coconut added to it and also we simmer this in coconut milk. So this is done. So that's your solo ladder or stuffed chilies. So the next thing we're going to make is just some kind of like a spicy coconutty sauce to go with the meal. So we've got the remaining rumpa, chili paste, I probably don't need all of that. Try it semi-dry or dry before I add the oil so that it doesn't spit everywhere. So you can see this is browning up nicely and the oil is just starting to separate. So what you want to do now is just add coconut milk. 
I'm adding a bit of water because I'm using coconut cream so it's a bit thick. And we're going to add the Kelantan fermented fish sauce, Budu. But if you don't have that, don't worry about it. A bit of fish sauce might work. A bit of sugar, the Kelantan food tends to be noticeably sweet. And a bit of salt or chicken powder. And depending on how much you like your chilli, you can have more chilli paste in here, in which case it will be a brighter red colour. So that's the sauce, the spicy sauce to go with your nasi karabu. Optional, I've had nasi karabu that doesn't come with this sauce, but it's just nice to have something to drizzle over your rice. It's another popular but optional ingredient to go with your nasi karabu is some fried fish crackers. We're just going to heat up some oil. So it's pretty hot, very hot. And we're just going to fry up some fish crackers. You can use prawn crackers, you can use vegetable crackers. Okay, so I've got some fish crackers here from Malaysia actually. Kelantan is famous for its fish crackers. Okay, so now we've got a few things together. We can assemble the nasi krabu. And here's the blue rice. I'm a bit light-handed with the blue hue because I don't necessarily like the rice to look too bright blue. But it's a personal preference thing. So we're just going to assemble the nasi krabu. Got the rice here. Got some cucumber. If you have snake beans, that's a good option to have with this. Cabbage, raw cabbage, bean sprouts, that sort of stuff. So we've got the solot lada, the stuffed chili, some of the fish surrounding, fish and coconut mix, some of the coconut sambal here, chili sauce if you like. And very typically you would have half a salted egg here, but we don't have that today. And also usually you would serve it with the fermented fish sauce, or the budu, and of course the cracker. Takes a little bit of time to get everything together, but definitely worth the effort. One of my favorite dishes in the world, nasi karabu kelantan. To make it soft, and okay. 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 To make it soft, it's very easy. Because it's easy to wrapping, mm. yeah, to put the rice. Oh, background music. <laughs> the nature of the bunyi bugu bugu is great. Actually, in countryside, our aboriginal people also make it this one, but in different way. Okay. They they using a bamboo. Oh, really? uh, they put yeah. the okay. rice inside the bamboo. Okay. Then also can eat together with this one also. Okay. Thing. But that one is made by aboriginal people. Okay. Uh, do they do they, do they grow the bamboo or no? Uh, no. Do they Grow the bamboo. Uh, grow the bamboo with okay. a, uh, by using open flame. Okay. Uh, like sure. to make it like what, what we similar like we make it leman, you know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. the leman they was use alternate rice. But yeah. for the this it's, one it's they put inside there's no more rice. They actually they they cook by using okay. bamboo. Okay. Ini kita our country saya go musang. Kaum batik. Kaum batik. Dia punya badan bintik-bintik ni. Bintik. Uh, uh, you travel to Kuala Ko, you can find uh, that kind of people. Uh, tapi tak ramai lah. Uh, dia tumpuk-tumpuk. Macam kita tengok. Dia memang dah, kaum dia memang gitu. That's why kita panggil kaum batik. Uh, because dia punya kulit badan dia bertumpuk-tumpuk-tumpuk. Uh, macam batik. Uh, yeah. uh.